Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. It's uh, Reverend Lawrence London Jr., Reverend Lonnie, from New Jerusalem Temple Missionary Baptist Church, where the past, proud pastor is my dad, Bishop Lawrence London Sr., and our assistant pastor, Reverend Norma Jean Pendris. It's good to be in the house again one more time to be able to deal with New Day Bible Study. Um, this is the day that the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad therein. And I'm just glad to be able to move outside of my home and come in the house of God one more time just to try to attempt to equip and feed a little bit of God's word. Amen. It's good to be here. We give honor to God with great It's been one of those days, my brothers and sisters. Uh, we're praying for my Aunt Gloria. Uh, Ridgeway and the passing of Mother Ridgeway um, and things like this is just putting us in perspective of um, the importance of being wrapped up in the Lord. Amen. So I don't know how I'm going to come off today because I'm a little bit passionate about um, what I'm going to teach and I'm going to stay where I've been um, dealing with the Holy Spirit because um, we keep on skating over the important things and um, I'm dealing with this the, the small things, when the big thing that matters is the fact that we are here because God got a job for us. All of us have purpose. All of us have, have, a, have a mission. And not only that, to my brothers and sisters, all of them, all of us has to have his prophet's power. So um, um, I was dealing with Acts, the first chapter, um, dealing with the coming of the Holy Spirit and the um, changing of the guard, if you will. Now, I call them, and I'm going to just set the scene one more time because I don't want you to forget. I want you to understand how I believe important this is to the body of Christ because at this time, um, my dad got on the prayer line today. And for those who, I'll give the prayer line number before we leave because I believe we need to stay in prayer, stay bathed in prayer, keep on communicating with God, keep on growing in relationship with God. Um, I give it now, 605. Five six two zero four four four, I believe, and uh, the show ID number is one four two nine zero five. And we, but we we were on the prayer line, and Dad was talking about how we are now forced, really, even though we are being the church, I mean, we're not being New Jerusalem, y'all. Right now, we are being the church. We are people who are calling each other. We are people who who, who are communicating still. A lot of people are still paying their tithes because they just trust the Lord and the, and the Lord's been blessing. The Lord is still, God is still God, whether there's a pandemic or not. And I'm not going to spend time talking about this pandemic. I'm going to spend more time talking about us infecting the air, just like this so-called virus is infecting the air, because we have the most uh, important gift there is on this earth right now, important enough that, um, you know, uh, that Jesus died for it, amen, so that we could be in this time and place uh, at a time like this, ready to represent him. Uh, so um, go back to Acts, the um, first chapter, um, when Jesus seemed to be passing the torch, it's been the change, it's like the changing of the guard, if you will, you know, um, uh, you know and um, in the Bible, the way it's set up, the Bible is so amazing, I promise you. Um, the way the Bible is set up, it's set up in threes all through the Bible. I can prove that. But the way it's set up through this third, this three, this one, two, three, is through the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. So here, when Jesus is in Acts, the first chapter, and I'm going to deal with that, Acts, the first chapter, uh, he had died, he arose, he's with his disciples. His works are finished. But now he's introducing his apostle to the new pastor. Remember, he's a, I call him the new pastor because that's pretty much what it is. His works is finished. He's great. You know, he said the gift must come so we can start. Amen. This new pastor can promote and provoke us for the rest of the work. Amen. Uh, uh, and I put it like this. The works of the Father in the Bible, the way it's written, the works of the Father can be seen all through the Old Testament. The works of the Son can be seen right through the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. 
Now the works of the Holy Spirit, if you will, amen, is this time in Acts. As a matter of fact, the book I said before is called Acts of the Apostles, when it should be entitled the Acts of the Holy Spirit. And here Jesus is introducing what he's been teaching them in the first place about this new pastor, this new gift, this person. Amen. He called the Holy Spirit in, in John, the 14th chapter, we're going to look at that, a person. And this is important. And, I, and, and if I get this message out, I'm going to seal the deal and I'm going to leave you alone. Might be 10, 15, 20 minutes, but he introduced uh, the Holy Spirit as a person. Now I want to look at that in John, the 14th chapter. If you got the Bible, uh, let's look at John, the 14th chapter. Ugh. Yep. And um, I had some conversations with some people who said, why do you call him the pastor? Because that's what he is. That's what he's like to be. He's a pastor. And what's important is when, you know, you know, everybody introduces the next person. That's why I call it the pastor of the baton. God, the creator, did his thing in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, he introduced his son. After, he, after Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist, he introduced his son. When the heavens opened up, the, the, the spirit of descended as a dove. Amen. He said, God himself introduced his son. This is my, my, my son, who I'm well pleased. Now, we have Jesus, the array of sin, introducing this Holy Spirit, this person. Now, what gets me is we, uh, well, we'll read it. And, we'll, and, and, I'll, and once I make this point, I hope it gives you something to study, something to think about I mean, at the end of this Bible class session. I hope so. Um, John, the 14th chapter, um, beginning at verse 15. This is the promise that Jesus is teaching his disciples about when it comes to the Holy Spirit. In John 14, this is one of the first, this is the first time he really introduced the Holy Spirit. And this is how he introduced them. John 14, the 15th chapter. Amen. And, um, I'm going to read from an NIV. So it'll be a little different. It says, If you love me, keep my commands, or my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and to be with you forever. Man, it's hard for me to get past that first, that first line of this scripture. It says, if you love me, keep my commands for my commandments. Amen. Um, what's interesting about this, why I'm froze on that, if you really look at the chapter before, chapter 14, Jesus <laughs> had just washed the feet of his disciples. After he washed the feet of his disciples, he then predicted and told them who was going to betray him. After he told them about the betrayer, he then says, a new command or a new commandment I give to you. <laughs> and this new commandment that he said was that you love one another as I love you. Somebody talk to me. Before this chapter, he just said and gave a new commandment. And his new commandment was that we would love one another as he and loved us. Amen. That's what he said. That's what he was talking about in, 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 in chapter 13. And then right after that, he predicted that Peter would deny him. This is all in chapter 13. Then in chapter 14, because he's talking about leaving, he tells them, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. All of this is, 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 is headlining this, this 14th uh, chapter. And then he comes down and let them know, listen, if you love me, I just told you what the, a new commandment I give to you. You love one another as I love you. That's the new commandment. If you hold that down, you love it. You, you, you won't steal. You won't do all that. All you got to do is love one another as I love you. I'm going to show you the ultimate love. I already told you that I'm going to be betrayed. I'm going to be crucified. And three days later, I'm going to get, they didn't understand it, but he said it over and over again. And here he is to act, get ready. He's get ready to introduce the Holy Spirit. He said, if you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate. Oh, yeah, he'll give you another advocate. And he said, and he, and to be, and, and to help you, and be with you forever. The Spirit, the truth, of truth. 
The world cannot accept him. Amen. That brings me to my point that the Holy Spirit is a person. For some reason, we can't get that through our skulls that the Holy Spirit is a person. Amen. The Holy Spirit is a person. Matter of fact, the Holy Spirit is God the Holy. We call him God the Holy Spirit. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. There are three works of God, of God that are represented in the Bible. Just told you that. In the beginning, the Old Testament is God the Father. And the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and, and, and John, is God the Son. And now he's introducing the rest of works that's going to go forward with Peter says in the last days and introducing the person of God, the Holy Spirit. I hope you follow me. Amen. Amen. The spirit of truth, the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you will know him for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you and before long, the world will not see you no more, but you will see me. That's interesting language because it's hard to disconnect the three. You cannot disconnect God from the Son. You cannot disconnect the Son from the Holy Spirit or vice versa. They are all one. Hallelujah. And what he's introducing in this day is that, it's the, and we'll talk about that, um, I hope I close it out right, that in these last days, this is the time where the works, this person, is to work in us, amen, amen, but, but, but for some reason, we're just denying the person, and we're paying more attention to the power, amen. Uh, uh, and, 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 and I call him pastor, in this text, he called him an advocate, in the message, he calls, you, he calls him a friend, uh, in the King James Version, he calls him the comforter. In the New King James Version, he calls him the helper. He's, a, he's whatever you need. Amen. He's a comforter. He's a friend. He's an advocate. He's a, comp he's a helper. He's your pastor. He's, every, he's a counselor. One scripture, one um, uh, 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 interpretation calls him a counselor. He is all of the above. But he is a he that's working in us. Amen. That's poured out on us. I hope you follow me. Amen. And, um, and, and, and I'm going to flip back to Acts because this, this is the problem where we're missing the part of growing in relationship with the person and being too tied up in the power. This is how the denominations are made because we get hung up more on the power than we do on the person. Amen. Amen. He said, uh, 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 actually, one, he said, listen, when I give you this power, it's going to be a promise power. And, and, and you, John baptized with water. Remember, we talked about that last week. I think, or we, yeah, last week. But you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And I talked about what baptism means in, that, in the Greek term, baptism means drenched, soaked, and tempered. There were three parts of the word baptism. Baptismal. Baptismal. To be drenched, soaked, and be tempered. There's three things about the Holy Spirit that he comes to your life to do. He comes to soak you, he comes to drench you, and he comes to temper you. What does temper mean? Temper means he comes to modify you, to test you, to make you brand new. The evidence of the Holy Spirit is something about your character changes. You change and you become more like him. Amen. He modifies you through tests. Amen. He modifies you through situations. Amen. But the only way you can get there is you got to be baptized, be soaked and drenched in him. He said, John baptized with water. We baptize with water. We allow people to do the symbolic baptism that Jesus has done where we go down into the water and we come back up as new Representing, giving away the old life and coming up brand new. Because that's what repentance is all about. It's about not just saying a prayer and saying, I'm sorry. That's being remor remorseful. No, repentance is not remorse. Repentance is a total change of your mindset. Repentance is a total change of who you are. It's getting rid of the old you and coming up a new you. Hallelujah. By letting this... Uh, but this mind being you, which is also in Christ, by being not 
conform to this world, but being transformed by the renewing. There's a renewing I say I am willing to do when I get baptized into the faith. Amen. Are y'all with me? That's what baptismo was all about. Amen. He said, you, John, baptized with water, but you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Amen. He said, and then um, what, what gets me is verse Acts chapter 1, verse 8. And then we'll talk about why we're so messed up. Amen. Uh, Acts chapter 1. But they knew exactly what Jesus was talking about. He said, listen, you're going to wait for the promise which I have told you about. The promise of the Father which I have told you about. Amen. You're going to be baptized with this power. Amen. You're going to be drenched with this power. Let me go back to, some just hit me. Let me go back to John 13. Let me tell you, you need to love this word because this word is awesome. He's talking about cleansing you up and being drenched. I told you, I think I got some water. I told you, this is the difference from a believer. Somebody can confess Christ, and the Bible says, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that the Lord Jesus, you shall be saved. Saying that Jesus is Lord is just like taking this sip of water. Mm, that water went inside of me. I have him on, I have this water on the inside. Just like your confession, amen, when you confess Christ, you immediately have him on the inside. Now, the growing part of life is when he has you, amen. And I talked about the water part, where you have a water wave. I love it. I, I promise you, I hope, Lord, let me be a millionaire. If I be a millionaire, I keep seeing this water part because I learned so many things from water issues for some reason. Water reminds me of the spirit, I guess. I don't know. It's, it's crazy. But if you go to the water, it's this thing. I love this thing. It's like a wave pool and it keeps on moving and, and people jump in it and the water just pushes you wherever you want to go. Where, matter of fact, wherever it wants you to go. I'm sorry, wherever it wants you to go. It looks scary, but once you jump in it, it's fun. You just go on, hold on, and enjoy the ride. That's what being baptized in the Holy Spirit is like. When you're drenched and soaked, you're jumping. You're not just taking a sip. You're jumping in, and you're allowing, amen, not just you to have the Spirit, but for the Spirit to have you, for the Spirit to take you through your, your, your test, for the Spirit to take you through your trials, and learn whatever you need to learn through your trials. That's the difference. So when you're a baptized believer, you are trusting and believing that this person, amen, that's what the disciples know, that this person, they didn't understand it in the beginning, but this person takes control of your life if you allow them to. That's that right there is the catch. You got to allow them to. And plus, you got to acknowledge that he's more important than the power. Let me go. Let me let me deal with this. Acts 1 and 8. And then I'm going to leave you alone. Um, Acts 1 and 8. It says this. And now, uh, I think I might be reading from the NIV. It says, Jesus said, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and in the ends of the earth. My God. Just a second. I got to rewind again. I, I passed right over that 13th chapter of, of John when I talked about baptism. Uh, it's interesting. In the 13th chapter of John, this is what caught me and got me all excited. It's interesting that from the first part of that chapter, it shows Jesus, I, I believe I'm telling you, it shows Jesus washing the feet of his disciples. This is why it's important to not just have him, but to let him have you. He said, he, Jesus is washing the feet of his disciples. He's just, he, he's down there getting that, that down and dirty on those feet, washing their feet. And when he gets to Peter, Peter says, you think you're going to wash my feet? Uh-uh. You can't wash my feet. And then Jesus says something prolific that deals with what I'm talking about with baptism. He says, except you let me wash my, your feet, you will have no part in me. He said, oh, well, don't just wash my feet, wash my hands. He said, except you let me wash your feet, you have no part in me. What did that, why does that make you excited? This is why it makes me excited. Because Jesus was willing to get down and dirty to clean the dirtiest part of his disciples' bodies. <laughs> Amen. Every learner needs to understand this. Jesus got down and he went to clean the dirtiest part of his disciples, his learners, his followers' bodies. That's why Peter was offended. I'll tell you how 
I, I, I was watching a TV show. And doctors, this is how good Jesus, this is how, 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 how omniscient God is. Um, I was watching this thing, and uh, on the, the doctors were doing a poll. They said, which part do you think is the dirtiest part of your body? And they had three things. They said, your underarms, your butt, or your feet. And I was sitting there like, wow, okay, which is the dirtiest part of your body? The underarms, they get nice and sweaty. Matter of fact, if you wear a white shirt too much and you sweat too much, you leave a little yellow stain. That's dirty. <laughs> your butt? Oh my God. How often do I have to bite my butt? We got to clean ourselves. And I'm telling y'all, probably said, this boy is crazy. But I'm just, it was a good question. I was thinking, I'm telling y'all, bring you in. I said, man, and your feet, man, you know, your feet just stink and stuff. But man, you can go through the stuff you go through with your underarms and your butt. So I'm narrowing it down to those. I would say your butt. They said, okay, here we go. Which part is the dirtiest part of your body? Your underarms, your butt, or your feet? And I was waiting for the answer. Just knew I had to be right. They said, it is your feet. I was like, what? And they said, people don't know that your feet bear most of the toxins of your body. Most of your toxins move down to your feet. Amen. <laughs> it's one of the dirtiest parts of your body. And here is Jesus Amen. My eyes start to feel good. <laughs> he gets on his knees and he cleans the dirtiest, not only the dirt, they walk with sandals. They didn't have shoes on like us. They had dusting, they were dirty, they got toxins, and here he is down there washing the dirtiest part of his disciples. That's what God and his spirit wants to do for each and every one of us. This is what we need to understand. The spirit as a person wants to wash the dirtiest part of us. If it's your lying, amen, he wants to wash your dirtiest part. If it's your lust, your sexual immorality, he wants to wash the dirtiest part of us. If it's your gossiping, your attitude, your mindset, that's the good part about the person of the Holy Spirit and being baptized in the Holy Spirit because it comes to wash the salt, the dirtiest part of us. Hallelujah. And it's a person who comes to do it. The problem is we keep holding on to the things that the Spirit is trying to wash away. I'm telling you, I'm glad, I'm so glad I ain't the same Lonnie I used to be. Liar, sneaky, <laughs> tricky, whoremonger. I'll just talk about me. I, I let you think about what you are. Think all crazy mean. Sometimes I get mean, hateful. Sometimes I want to fight a violence. <laughs> I'm so glad that when I finally allowed to stop just taking a sip and finally jumped in and let, hallelujah, myself be soft and let him lead me, there were some things I had to learn not to get mad about no more. There were some, there were some, 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 some habits that the Spirit taught me how to break. Amen. Because he came to wash our dirtiest part. And the good part about this person, that we got God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. His works are the most important works that's going on in your life if you allow yourself to recognize he's your person. Amen. Okay, let me get back to it. All right, Acts, I said, uh, Acts 1 and 8. It says, Jesus said that you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has, has, has comes on you, and you will be my witnesses. Let me just talk about this. It says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come. This is the evidence that you got the person is by the power. Somebody talk to them. Somebody talk. The problem with us, when we read these texts, now the disciples, he didn't, Jesus didn't do a rewind like I just did and told you that the Holy Spirit was a person. They knew this. He taught them this. I mean, he taught them this at the most critical hour of his life. He was getting ready to be crucified. He taught them this. I'm not going to leave you. You're going to have me. I'm going to send up. The promise is going to come. I'm going to pray to the Father. You're going to have everything you need, whether you want to call him your pastor, advocate, friend, comfort, helper. You're going to have whatever you need. <laughs> and I got to go. I told you that last. He said, I got to go. Unless, uh, but, or else the, problem, the, the promise won't come. And when he gets to here, he goes, but you shall receive power. But is a key word. Why did he say but? Because his disciples still didn't get it. His disciples had just asked him, 
Now, are you ready to start? If you don't start restoring your kingdom, you didn't die, you didn't got up, you didn't talk to us for 40 days, you ready, you ready, when you ready to start um, uh, uh, getting your kingdom? And he said, that's not for you to know. But, he said, he said listen, don't get, don't get messed up. This ain't about me. Hallelujah. But this is the passing of the torch. If you keep focusing on me, you're not going to get how, you're not going to be able to go to the new level, to the next level. You're not going to take this ministry higher than it's supposed to go. Sometimes we get caught up on the pastor amen, that we have that we don't understand that there's another pastor ready to take us higher. Amen. I'm not saying that because I won't be nobody's pastor. I'm just saying that's the truth of God. You need to pass the baton. I loan the pass of the time to my son. Prayerfully, I become a billionaire. Do something good. Lay a foundation. And when I lay a foundation, I pray that I can talk to my son. Say, all right, son. I'm ready to check out here. This is the baton. I need you to learn this. That, that's what life is all about. The Jews knew this. They all, we talked about Jacob. Uh, Dad talked about, we talked about Jacob on, uh, uh, on the prayer line today. Jacob and his name being changed to Israel. All that came from passing the baton. Amen. And guess what? That was the third generation. Just like I'm talking about the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. That was the third generation. The promise was given to Abraham and moved past Isaac. But the promise was fulfilled through Jacob, a trickster. Amen. A Jacob who allowed God to change him and change his name. That's the same. The Bible is so consistent. All through it, <laughs> you'll see these formats, these formats of three, and the greater is always the third. Hallelujah. He talks about love. He said, now there's three things, faith, hope, and love. But he said, but the greatest of these is love. Somebody talk to me. That's how the Bible, the Bible is an excellent book. Hallelujah. If you start read that thing from front to back more than once, it's an excellent, it's an excellent book of history of who we are. It'll teach us of who we are. It'll give us a mindset. It gives us a, a, a confidence of who we are and who God is. God continues to give us a peek into who he is. Give us his heart a little more and more. We still know in part. We still need to keep reading. But the more we read, the more we get the revelation of who we are. And who we are right now is what I call the bomb of Gilead. We are the people that America is travailing and birthday, waiting to come forth to be the true children of God. Hallelujah. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. This is the greatest time of God in the Bible right now. Greatest time. Why? Because uh, God gets to take back residency of where he lived in the first place. Let me say it again. God wants to take back residency of where he lived in the first place. When he built man, he formed them in his image and his likeness, and what he do? What the Bible says, he breathed into them his very spirit, which was the breath of life. The first Adam lost it, but the second Adam is here introducing how we're going to get it back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> I get excited about this stuff. Now, if it wasn't for Jesus and his work to him going up, we wouldn't have that. We got a moment because Peter explained and he said, it comes to pass that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. That he understood. He didn't understand it in Acts, but he understood in Acts 1, but he understood it in Acts 2. Man, listen, what I didn't understand, the person is preaching to me now. Hallelujah. We ain't drunk. This is what's going on. The Bible said, God said, in the last days, I'm going to pour out my spirit. I'm going to breathe right back into you. I'm going to take back my residency. Hallelujah. The person is back in me. The person is back connected to me. Now, do I want to have a relationship with the person or the power? And that's where we miss the mark. We get so caught up in the power, we forget about the person. We focus more on power and not the focus. We got denominations that will say, you ain't got evidence of the person unless you're speaking in tongues. And we believe that because we want power. As a matter of fact, people will pray. And I hear this time and time again. I used to say it until I learned better. We, used, we pray time and time again. Lord, heal this person. Lord, I laid my hands on this knot. I laid my hands on, on a knot on, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a young boy one time. I'll never forget it. It was, it was, it was off his head. Just got in a car accident. His, his, his head was just, and we just take him to the hospital. I'll never forget. Laying hands on that boy's head and that knot disappeared. Is the power real? Real? Yes, it is. There is power. 
But the power comes to prove that you have the person. Hallelujah. And those ain't the only way, hallelujah, to know that you have the person. Amen. It's power. But it's, it's not. And we say, man, I just healed that person. Man, I just, I, those pastors that you see on TV talk, oh, look at, give me spring waters and all this stuff. Yeah, let's tell them what I did. I just did this and I gave you this. And I promise you it's going to bless you. Because when they do that, you got to watch it, man, because they're uh, focused more on the power when God is relational. He wants to be, he wants to get right back. He wants to get right back in total rule of the place he originally lived in the first place when he created us in his image and his life. Man, I hope this makes sense. I got God in me, and he sits there as a gentleman until I realize he's, 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 he's that loving God that even though he don't take over, he's patient. Let's look at 1 Corinthians. If you want to know what you got in you, you just read uh, 1 Corinthians. You got that patience, kindness, long-suffering, the, the fruit of the Spirit, all that stuff. Amen. It's not envious. Does not boast. <laughs> don't say, I got you now. No. He wants relationships. Last week, I talked about the importance of choices and relationships. You can get married and make the choice to have uh, everybody you can, you can choose. You can make the choice to marry someone. But when you make the choice to marry someone, you also have to make the choice to stay married. Somebody talk to me. Marriage ain't going to be easy. And God knows that. He's married to us. The Bible says he's married to backslide. But what he does, he makes the choice to love us anyway. So he's merciful. We beat ourselves up when God is waiting for us to give him whatever that situation we beat ourselves up with. We sit there and he's, wait, he's merciful. He's kind. He sits there and wait. You know, you make the choice. I make a choice. Let's, let's just, let's, if you're married, this, this is what you got to go through to have an effective marriage. You got to forgive. You got to forget over and over again. It can't be one. You got to forgive. You got to forget. You got to trust. Amen. That's what you did when you got married. Don't think that if you can't do that, there's something that, and both parties should do it. You got to believe. You got to do all these things in a marriage. If you forgave before, you got to forgive again. How, what makes you any different in a marriage than you are a child? If you're a child of God, you're a child of God. And what this person does, he builds you up in that character so you can continue to be a better child. Matter of fact, change. <laughs> it's all about change. Look what Peter went through. A cousin. Cut your hair off, all that stuff. But then when the spirit, the person took over, there was a change. He, he preached the first sermon. Hallelujah. Because that's what the person is here. There's a sermon in you. There's a lesson in you. Hallelujah. You should be up here teaching. If you ain't teaching uh, a church, you should be in your house teach, teaching your family. There's too many messages in you if you let the person grow. That's what it's all about. Hallelujah. We get caught up more in the power, and we forget about the person. Let me tell you how crazy that is. Let me tell you how crazy that is. Right now, man, listen, I got this light plugged up, you know, uh, got a fan, these speakers plugged up, the lights are on, they're all part of the source. They all got, I, I, I plug it into a source, and it ain't even the source, the source ain't even here, the source is somewhere else. <laughs> and guess what? When I get through with this and turn the lights off, the speakers off, and everything, guess what's going to happen? A bill is going to come. <laughs> There's going to be a bill. <laughs> and that bill is going to have whatever I use in here, that amount on that bill is going to come to this church. Amen. If you're at your house, whatever you got on, you got your TV on, you got to plug it into a source. It's a source somewhere else. But what they do is when you when you finish using that source, finish using that computer, finish using, charging up your phone, they're going to send you a bill. Now what makes, so we get, why get caught up with a power like that? I mean, that you have to pay for. The power we have that we focus on, too, we, power, we focus on the power instead of the person. Because our power comes from a source. Our power comes from the source of God, the Holy Spirit himself, living in us. When we pray and things happen. We say, pray to something, and when we pray to something, that power came from that source. Amen. Amen. And guess what about that source? When, when healing comes through us, that healing comes through us. I love, if you come on the prayer line, you're going to meet my assistant pastor. I call her assistant pastor in the prayer line. Her name is Michelle Ford. 
And Michelle, boy, I was praying for a, a minister to help me, but uh, on the prayer line at nights at least. But Michelle, she's a single, she's a, a single mom, got kids, and she got a, 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 a child at home that's that's, that's bedridden. And boy, listen, when that girl, go, I, when you go to the hospital and the doctors give up on her, she said, I don't care what y'all say, I know what God will do. And she'll pray in the hospital, and guess what? That source will heal her daughter. Just about over and over, death. Oh, your baby ain't gonna make it past 24 hours. Years later, the baby's still here. Oh, this this Christmas, uh, Christmas Eve, they said we gotta get her to another hospital, but she cannot make it to this hospital. It just can't happen. No, uh -uh. she ain't gonna make the ride. She said, okay, but she prayed, and the source, amen, she knew that power. She's growing in such a relationship with God that that power source, amen, keeps taking care of. Not only did she make it to the hospital, she got healed on Christmas Day. She had a Christmas miracle. Her baby is still here because she got that, she understands the source. She prays. And there's power that comes from the source she knows she has within her. Because she grew in relationship, y'all. Amen. The way we grow in power, we, God give us free gifts, that ain't nothing. Amen. Speaking in tongues, that ain't nothing. Amen. Prophesying, that ain't nothing. But the gift is the relationship we have with the source. And the opposite of this source, where we got to pay for it, it is a travesty, my brothers and sisters. To have a source that's been paid for. And that's what's wrong with us. We're, so, we're selfish. We want power and we want to be that person that's known. But the person that needs to be known is the person that already paid the bill. Jesus paid with his life for us to have this source. This person of the Holy Spirit. This person that whatever we need, we can plug in at any time. I guarantee you. As you go, grow in relationship with him, the Holy Spirit, when you plug into healing when you need it, it will come. Somebody talk to me. When you plug into peace when you need it, it will come. Hallelujah. When you come in and when you come and you just don't think you can make it and you plug into his joy, it will come. Hallelujah. Not only will it come, you can joy in it because you ain't got to pay for it. It's already been paid. So my point in this lesson is to give God back his place in your heart. Let him be your source. Let him guide you. Let him have you. Come on and enjoy the ride of life. Yeah, there's going to be some tough times. Yeah, there's going to be some tears. But after tears, the Bible, his, the word says, we can may endure for a night. But you'll start understanding and living those things. You start under, we'll start understanding, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Because there's some times I couldn't make it but this strength got me, his strength got me, not my strength. And when we acknowledge, the more we acknowledge him, the more, the more we choose to acknowledge him, the more he'll choose to grow in a relationship with us. Come on, y'all. The more we choose to do it his way and not our way, the more he grows. And that's why my prayer daily is, Lord, please give me more of you and less of myself. Amen. And here you are, right here with me. I ain't got that. I, you, hey, if I'm going through some loneliness, I, all I got to do is remember that he said, I'll never leave you alone. You're right here with me. I, man, I think I flew through this too fast, and I'm trying to keep a time limit. There's so much in these scriptures. There's so much in these lives that we have. Why is there so much in these lives that we have? Because we have God. Amen. God, the Holy Spirit, his presence, ready to just rule over us, ready to take control. Man, all we have to do is continue to choose him. Continue to let him lead. Continue to jump in and let him do his work. Amen. And then continue to glorify his name. Continue to rejoice in him always. You rejoice when you remember those situations you couldn't come out of. Matter of fact, the person that you are, you're not no more. It's not because of you. It's because of him. You understand that it ain't that power comes from the source. Because how that source is in you. That source is in me. That source is who we are. We are God's children, and there's nothing we can't conquer. I don't care if you're black. I don't care if you're white. I don't care if you're straight. I don't care if you're gay. I don't care if you're liar. I don't care if you're a cheater. He could change anybody. He could change anything. There's nothing he can't do, and there is nothing too hard for him. God, is Sarah, God asked Sarah, is there anything too hard for God? Good question. We got him in us. Is there anything too hard for him? 
Any dream he can't, we can't achieve. Any person we can't love. Is there anything too hard for him? That's why I leave you with that question. Because that same power lives in you. And if we make the choice to stay close to him, to grow a relationship with him, to communicate with him, prayer is the key, my brothers and sisters. Prayer is the key to growing close, to learning more about his, his presence. Prayer is the key of allowing him to abide in you and you abide in him. And while sickness is going on, if a thousand can even fall on your left hand, ten thousand on your right, but it ain't going to come to you. Hallelujah. Because you know <laughs> the source. Amen. The source is the power. <laughs> Are you going with me? Amen. I pray something was said that will bless you at least and encourage you and, and challenge you, amen, to get excited about the person, amen, that's represented in these last days, amen, the person that's in you, the world changer is in you, your world can change if you just stay out there with the person, amen, the power will come, you can plug into anything he got, but please, my brothers and sisters, let's acknowledge the person that we have in us. That spiritual mind treatment, I'm going to close on that. Uh, it just blessed my life because every time I say it, I get a new revelation of who I really am. And not only that, I get a transformation of my mind. I don't care what I'm going through. I don't care what has just happened. I get a transformation of this mind right here. And New Jerusalem know it. Man, my dad wrote it some years ago. And it's so powerful right now in this day. It says, the words that I speak are my law of good, and they will produce the desired results because they are operated on by a power greater than I. Good alone goes from me through these words, and good alone returns to me. That's why you got to watch what you say. Watch what you speak. Hallelujah. That ain't the power, you know, people get off. Of, but if I'm connected to God, if I'm using his source, good alone goes from me, and good alone returns to me. This word is for me. Everything I say is for me and about me. Let me talk about these words. These words, my brothers and sisters, that we speak can produce greater children. These words that we speak, hallelujah, can create better marriages, better relationships. These words that we speak can uh, produce greater dreams. Amen. Good long goes from me and good long returns to me. Hallelujah. This word is for myself. Everything I say is for myself and about myself. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a creator, amen, because the creator lives in me, amen, I'm sorry, okay, there is one life, and that life is God, let me say it again, there is one life, and that life is God, that life is perfect, and that life is my life right now, my body is manifesting with the living spirit, this person, it is created and sustained. That person was here in the beginning by the one presence and the one power. That power from the beginning, hallelujah, when God said, let there be, that power is flowing in and through me just like it was flowing through the first Adam before he sinned right now, animating every organ and every function of my physical being. There is no congestion, no confusion, and no inaction. There is no congestion going through these arteries, no confusion going on in my mind. No, hallelujah, hallelujah. There is no, there is perfect circulation, perfect assimilation, and perfect elimination. Hallelujah. Why, my brothers and sisters, hallelujah, because I am one with the infinite rhythm of life which flows through me in love, harmony, and peace. There is no fear. No doubt and no uncertainty in my mind. And I'm letting that life, which is perfect, control me and flow through me right now. I am a master. God made me in his image. He made me a master. Nothing outside of me will allow to master the power of God, the Holy Spirit that lives inside of me. It is done. It is complete. Why? Because Jesus died on that cross. He came down here lived a moment, died on that cross, got up with all power in his hand, even before he said, it is finished, before he gave up his spirit, hallelujah, hallelujah, and then came back, amen, with all power in his hands, and it is done, 
It is complete. Then he rose up and allowed his spirit to be poured out on all. It is done. It is complete. And because of this, every day, every day I wake up, every day I wake up, and every way, I am richer. I'm richer in health. I'm richer in my mind. I'm richer in peace. I'm richer in righteousness. I'm richer in healing. I am richer and richer and richer. I now express life because of this. Eternal life. The God kind of life, the kingdom life is mine right now. I pray you were blessed. I went too long. I love you. But I pray, God, you seal us with more of you and less of us in this day. In Jesus' name, in every day of our life, make us better every day. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.